Welcome to the Troy Stober Show. You don't have to listen, but you're going to hear about it anyway. And welcome to the Troy Stober Show. My name is Troy Stober. I'm your host. And today we have a special guest in the studio, Jack Stober. He has the same last name as me. (laughs) Jack, let's start with a little bit about you. Uh, Tell us about yourself, uh, how old you are, and kind of what your story is, where you come from. Um, I'm Jack, and uh, I am starting out, or I don't know, I'm I'm, uh, 14, and I really like rodeo and hanging out with friends. And so you are going to be a freshman at Tualatin High School? Yeah. So basically, uh, you spent the pandemic. Did you go to school at all last year, or were you um, a little bit last year? Okay, so most of it was online or whatever. Yes. How, how was that? Oh, I'm pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically, are you looking forward then to getting back into school? Um, not really, because with the online school, you could do it wherever you want, but with normal school, you can't really move the school, so you have to go to it. Gotcha, gotcha. So you like the convenience of being at home. In fact, I will say this, uh, because I I knew you very well. Uh, I still know you very well. You're my son. Uh, But I knew you well at the beginning of the pandemic. You and your sister seemed very happy at the beginning because there was so much less running around. uh, It was just more laid back and just less stress. I I actually appreciated I could tell a big difference when the the pandemic started. That was what, the end of your sixth grade year, right? That was seventh seventh grade. The end of seventh grade. seventh grade. They cut it off, like, a little bit before spring break, I think. Like, I think the week before spring break, they cut it off. Of 2020. Yeah. So that would have been, God, now it's been a little bit over a year. So uh, we've all been vaccinated, and we're in this little podcast studio. Uh, yeah, by the way, first one. This, is, this is the inaugural season of the Troy Stober Show. It's kind of a tester. It's a tester. It's the first prototype. We call it the, um, what did I call it again? The Trust Over podcast? No, like the first the first video or the first... Pilot. The, pi- yeah, this the is pilot the- episode. As you know, uh, we're kind of treating it like a podcast, and it's going to be marketed as a podcast, but there's some very important differences, and that is in this podcast, there's going to be a lot of um, visual stimuli. There's going to be a large role of pictures, a large role of video uh, information, video input, and so as a result it might not be a bad suggestion to actually watch the show, okay, instead of just listening on a podcast. Um, tomorrow... On YouTube. <laughs> you're going to hear about it anyway, but you're going to see it too, right? Yeah. All right. For the folks at home who have never watched the Troy Stober show, it doesn't surprise me because this is the pilot, so... Um, First episode. It's kind of a tester, so... We're just kind of randomly getting some footage here, and hopefully we'll Carson. put together something entertaining, but... We are going to be talking about uh, a model for the physiology of happiness, okay? Because when we're not happy, our brain is a little disorganized. But when we have our act together, we get something called DINBAR. DINBAR is a, um, a little acronym. That's no, not an acronym. It's a mnemonic. You know what a mnemonic is? Nope. That'll be in the vocab section. That's coming up. Don't you worry. Uh, DINBAR means uh, growth into a new place, uh, crossing the bar above the din. Uh, And so, um, you know, when we uh, change and we grow, we actually have a little different physiology. I'm going to talk about that on the Troy Stober Show. We also have a little different anatomy, a little neuroanatomy. Uh, Should I tell him I'm a doctor? No. Okay, we'll leave that part out. But I do have some expertise. (laughs) We're coming at you from the Cox Electric Studios here on the campus of Willamette Falls Media Center in beautiful Oregon City, Oregon. Zandy Cox and her Bonnie crew of electrical installers will do your um, uh, electrical construction, uh, renovation, remodeling, um, installation of commercial uh, lighting fixtures. They're really good at what they do. They're online at coxelectricoregon.com. Um, tell me about rodeo, because uh, the show is about your happy place uh, growth uh, by you know being as happy as you can. Um, and I understand your happy place is on the back of a wild animal. Is that true? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> tell me about rodeo and how you got started. Um, well, I went to the St. Paul Rodeo in St. Paul, Oregon, and I uh, saw the team roping, and I thought it was pretty cool. So I uh, started team roping, and I thought it was a lot of fun. How, how long ago was this? It was about three years ago, This uh, right now, three years ago this summer. 
three years ago this summer. And now, Actually, July 4th, exactly. Because that's when the St. Paul Rodeo is. They have it every year at the same date? Yep. It's one of the biggest rodeos. That's what, they, that's what I hear. Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, so tell me about your training and, and your practice. Like, uh, where, where do you do this? Um, and, and, like, who helps you with that process? Um, I do it at my barn, and I have some coaches who help me. And uh, we'll uh, hook up a dummy to the, a quad and drive it around the arena and practice roping it like it's a real cow. And then uh, get muscle memory and stuff down. And, uh, yeah. So that, that event, so you, you, ride, you ride a horse and you're trying to rope. It's a, a, calf. a cow. A calf. calf. A yeah. calf. So it's calf roping. Or breakaway. Do you do something called rough stock? And, and can you explain to the audience what rough stock is? So rough stock is like the, the, the bucking animals, like bulls, saddle bronx, and bareback um, horses. So I'm doing saddle bronc, and, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You, you have a saddle, and you just try to get them for eight seconds and <laughs> lift and spur. So, so part of the rodeos that you participate in are, are rough stock, and, and part of them are um, this, this roping. There's different roping uh, events as well. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, and you've been doing it for a few years now. How how has your results been? How have you been doing lately on your rodeos? I don't know. It's just I'm just having fun and uh, doing the best I can. Okay, tell tell the uh, audience about um, the association. So what what's the name of the association and what are some of the events like? Um, so it's uh, Northwest Youth Rodeo Association and. Uh, they have a bunch of events, which most of them are, like, kind of boring, and they take all day before the fun events start. But, um, yeah. But these events, like, um, have participants who are what age age range? Like, what? what it- From, like, uh, five-year-olds to... Uh, 18 year olds um do the five-year-olds get on the rough stock <laughs> they do in fact they get on the steers and bucking is, ponies is is that is that safe <laughs> i mean is that advisable it's probably not advisable <laughs> but um it's a lot of fun that's for sure if by fun you mean they survive okay um <laughs> Tell me about what you like about rodeo. So um, you said that you got involved, you got hooked. I think you said you went to some camps, right? Yeah. And you, and you like to train at Fitzgerald Farms, right? Is that where you yeah. go? Yeah, yeah. That's out in Yamhill? Yeah, why, why do you say that for the podcast? Uh, because. Uh, we can probably cut that part out. <laughs> we're going to edit the part about Fitzgerald Farms out. Uh, so, Jack, um, you train... And you have gone to some camps uh, to help you get prepared for the rodeos. Yeah. Uh, tell me about what you like about it, what you've learned. Um, tell me about what your experience has been. Um, my experience has been, like, uh, just hanging out with your friends and then competing with them and uh, being, being able to have fun with them and, like, be competitive but also have, like, a friendly sport and a yeah, fun so game. Yeah, so you're kind of competing amongst your friends. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a delicate balance, right? You. You want them to do well, but not beat you. Yeah. Um, Which, um... <laughs> I, I understand you're ranked uh, highly right now uh, in the standings. So that's great. Congratulations on that. Um, I have uh, attended a couple of these rodeos, and I have a question about something I've observed. So when they're doing the, the rough stock, there's some people back there who are, like, kind of scraping up. It looks like they're scraping up their um, their their glove or they're scraping up a rope or they're trying to yeah. create some friction what is that all about so for that's for bull riding and um i mean for every rough stock event that you or i mean most some i don't i don't i'm not gonna we'll cut that right part now. out too <laughs> <laughs> um um in in rodeo they use um rosin which is if you don't know what rosin is it's the like a uh, sticky kind of powder or a uh, mixture of stuff that helps you stick to something like 
uh, your rope. Some people put them on their ropes or goat tying strings or cat gotcha. tying strings. It's like stick them. Like, yeah. Like back in the old days in football, they used to like put that on their hands. Like yeah. Stick them. Like so for for bull riding, they take rosin, put it in their hand, and they put it on their rope. And then when they're in the shoots, they warm it up, and it gets sticky, so it keeps their hand in it. Okay. Better, not okay. always. <laughs> so, that, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, you know, I think our audience would like to know what's what's your mindset like when you're getting ready to step over the shoot gate onto the animal. Like, uh, tell me what's what's going through. Because to me, that that seems like the biggest adrenaline rush or is it actually when they when they open the shoot gate and oh I, I my in my opinion it's the uh anticipation or like just just like them saying hey you're up and just watching it come through to you and they're like this is the one you got <laughs> and we're like holy moly that's the biggest one there wow wow Which i am i am uh i am the unlucky one that normally draws the biggest one there <laughs> I'm I'm two for six. <laughs> You're two for six. So you've you've got a qualified time twice, twice out of six times. <laughs> and in in junior saddle bronc saddle cow, they have how many seconds do you have to to hang on? Six seconds for juniors and eight seconds for seniors. All right. Uh, since this is our pilot, we probably should explain to the audience that. Um, you could try to listen to this broadcast as a podcast, uh, but you might not get out of it as much as you would think because a lot of what we're going to be doing is um, showing visuals and uh, doing some segments that involve a lot of um, you know, camera shots, uh, video pictures, and so forth. So It's like a ventriloquist doing comedy. <laughs> right, right. You, you kind of got to watch it. Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> It helps everyone in so many ways learn, grow, and communicate well when you use analogies. So I think that one of the um, segments that we're going to do on the Troy Stober Show is analogy time. And what Jack has just done is uh, created an analogy to something that I didn't really understand before or maybe our audience didn't really understand before. And, And now they have a little better understanding because they understand that a ventriloquist is to a entertainment as visual input is to the Troy Stober show. Do you guys get how that works? Do yes, you? I, I do. I understand it. There might be some fellow at home who's uh, okay. If you're not sitting, the brightest. if you're sitting in your mom's basement right now eating nachos and you didn't get that, it went shh over your head. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna edit that out for sure. <laughs> you need I, a new couch. Also, I, I, don't, I don't really think it's good to probably insult our audience but um i do appreciate the fact that that you did analogy time i uh spent about 10 minutes with show prep today um probably in future shows a little more time a little more time might help but i i i feel good that we got our first segment out of the way which is analogy time yeah thank you (laughs) thank you very much um i was wondering if i could show you a picture yeah and then I want to see if you could just uh, comment on it for me. Yeah. Okay. So here is the picture. Can you tell cue me what's it now. going on? <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> cue it up here uh, so that the folks at home can see. Can you tell me what here are we looking at and uh, what's going on exactly? Um, so this is a saddle cow for juniors. and uh, <laughs> do, do, you, do you recognize this picture? Yes, this is me, in <laughs> fact. Not um, how I'm supposed to be. Um, you, you look like you might be upside down. Is that you? Are you upside yes, down? Yes, yes, I am upside down, and I landed on my neck and strained everything in the back of my neck and got knocked out from this. Okay, okay. But uh, so this yeah. is not what to do. No, okay. I don't. I do not recommend it. I right. don't recommend falling just, like this. I was just checking there. There's your saddle. You got a helmet on. That's good. Yes. I and do. you put a you put a vest thing on, right? Yes. Um. Okay, going back to the the whole rodeo experience, do you uh, do you get hype music? Do you get walk up music that like gets you going? <laughs> yes, I, I'm. I'm uh, my my uh, big, uh, what is it? Entry song right now is "Walk" by Pantera. Yeah, and they got the announcer, so it's like next up, it's Junior Saddle Cow. We got Jack Stober. <laughs> okay. So you can put in requests with the the announcer. Yeah. 
Um, and is that one of your trainers right there, that guy? Yeah, and uh, he's the one that's you normally after the buzzer goes off, he comes and helps you get off. Gotcha. But uh, I did not make it that far. <laughs> In fact, I made it okay. farther to the I've, ground. <laughs> I've, been, I've embarrassed you far enough. Next up on the Troy Stober Show is a segment that we call Vocabulary Time. <laughs> It's better to communicate when we understand lots of different words that um, can be utilized to, um, to speak with. And so I'm going to give you a, a list of four words, Jack. You're going to pick a word, um, and, and if you already know it, don't, don't pick it. Okay. okay. But what we're going to do is try to learn the definition and see if we can um, think of a way we can incorporate and it. Put into it in a vocabulary. sentence. Put it into a sentence, and uh, more importantly, use it when we're talking to people. Um, because what I know is that um, when people understand what's being communicated, things work out a whole lot better. People are happier. People are more what I like to call dinbar. Can you put your hand up like that? Yeah. So you got it kind of under control when you communicate better. Mm-hmm. That's our goal. Here's your, here's your, que- here's your, here's your possible words. Um, first one is grifter. Uh, the second one is Byzantine, uh, stochastic, or derisory. So those are your four. Uh, I like, I want to try do, stochastic. First of all, do any of these ring No, bell? no, not the slightest bell is being rung. Stochastic. Uh, I couldn't have chosen a better word. Um, I got the, I got the definition right here. It says, randomly determined... Having a random distribution or pattern that may be analyzed uh, precisely. So, stochastic. Stochastic. Right? So, me, me drawing T-bone every time is very stochastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great example of the word stochastic. Uh, me having any chance of being successful with my new... Very, uh, very, <laughs> very stochastic. stochastic. Very stochastic. I think that we could all agree that statistically speaking, this has a very good old. chance of going nowhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> Stochastic. I'm looking forward to uh, that word coming up in your, in your vocabulary, Jack, because yeah. um, I think that'll be fantastic. We have another segment on the show uh, called Art Vault. Uh, Art Vault is actually presented by Willamette Coffee House, which is located off of Exit 6, the 10th Street exit in West Lynn. Smiling faces, delicious long bottom coffee. Thank you to Willamette Coffee House for giving me the free (laughs) T-shirt. Art Vault. So what we got, and this is going to be coming up on your screen, we got uh, three possible uh, choices that, Jack, you can choose from. And, And... each one of these things, I, I, I think you're going to be just truly amazed by. We got uh, globe lights, uh, goth wedding cakes, or ice constructions, and you can pick which one you want. We're going to go through and goth take lighting. a look at them. Do you do you want goth? I, I, you know, yeah, I know what that is. I I feel like that would be the most interesting, but I kind of want to see ice construction more. Ice constructions sound pretty cool. Um, all right, we're going to go with ice constructions. All right. I'm gonna put it on slide mode for you. Okay, so see the how Christmas they tree. see how they got the sun in the background there shining through. Uh-huh. So that's kind of cool. Like all that, all that right there. Those little, um, those little scales right there. Those spines. Yeah, they cover. Those are eyes. just really thin. And then out here, it's kind of thick, so it doesn't come through very well. That's actually kind of cool. So these are uh, ice creations. People have donuts, made, onion, like donuts on top of each other. I think that. Um, my simple snowman skills probably would not um, be very successful in making something quite like that. Oh, there again. So you see how these little sculptures, again, are kind of thin right there? And we got the sun shining through them, mm-hmm. whereas they're kind of thick right there, so you kind of see a shadow. So that's kind of cool. We'll go through and figure out just exactly who makes these. What it wasn't you. You're not that good. No. I, 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 as a disclaimer, I am not the ice sculpture who made these sculptures. You're, actually, not, you're not the ice sculptor. I'm not the ice sculptor or scripture or scripter. Scriptonite. What is that right there that we're looking at? It's snow. With Are those rocks? rocks? Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, I think that's cool. Second of all, you would have to have a certain kind of snow 
to make that feature. You know what I mean? Because how are you going to hold those those rocks up? Well, they probably made a pile of snow and put their rocks in and dug it out. Do you think this is fake? Do you think somebody, like, like, took some resin and, like, put it up there? And... No. No? You think they actually did that? No. I mean, it looks like a... Looks like a like, look, you can see the picture. There's, like, sun in the background and stuff. Uh-huh. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Something you don't see every day. Oh, Whoa, is that a beach? It's a beach, it's a beach in the snow. Are there are there beaches that have snow on them? No, they have. S- I think I think it depends beaches. on where, what what latitude you're at. But that looks like the Loch Ness monster. See, there's the oh, head, yeah. and there's like the, the feet, and there's the tail. I did not notice that. Well, that is why we have Art Vault, presented by Willamette Coffee House. Uh, oh. Look at that! It's like a little maze. Looks like some ruts by a sled. There's a name. There's a name for these things, like a labyrinth or something. I have no clue. Looks like a spiral. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm looking at... I wonder how they made that. It looks like they melted stuff. Like, they put stuff up there and they melted out little little stars. That's kind of cool, too. I'm like an art vault. I'm like an art vault a lot. Okay, there we go. That thing's got, like, blocks up on a... A circular pedestal. That's kind of cool. I wonder how long that took to make. Way too long. Well, the thing is, you, 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 it has to be cold there because this stuff would melt and it wouldn't even stay up. Mm-hmm. I what, mean, I thought they well, were doing it in Hawaii or something. That's what makes me wonder if this is, like, fake. But it is beautiful. It inspires my imagination. Look at that little thing. Ice ball. Ice ball. There you go. That's See how it's thin there again? That's mm-hmm. kind of cool. It's all thick, kind of down in the middle. All right. That's it. That's all we got for the ice sculptures. Ice and snow sculptures. Let's hear it for Art Vault. And next up on the Troy Stober Show is a segment we like to call Catchy Sayings. Um, Again, uh, when it comes to communication, um, the more creative you can be, I think the better off uh, people will understand stuff. And, and certainly the more memorable and entertaining, hopefully entertaining, it will be. So um, today's quote is by Albert Einstein, and it really means a lot to me. It's kind of it sums up a lot of what we're doing the here. First on the first part really talks about you. <laughs> Thank you, um, Jack Stober, uh, today's special guest on the pilot program for the Troy Stober Show. This is kind of a tester, just just letting everybody know it's saying this. This is the, a tester. Uh, none, none of this may actually come out. Um, hopefully it'll be somewhat entertaining. Hopefully, you know, some big they corporation don't will pick it up. Because and, they've been watching you. No, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> Offer me a lot of money. All right, here's the quote. I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. I have no special talent... I'm only passionately curious. Yeah, you're the first part. I'm the second part. We're all both parts. And here's the thing. If it was true that you had no special talent, then the second part couldn't be true. I'm only passionately curious. Because guess what? Being passionately curious is a very, very special talent. In fact, I've known for a long time that I've been curious about so many things. In in college, people would get mad at me because... Everything I said was why. Like, every other word, I was why. Like, my friends wanted to kill me constantly. They're like, Troy, let's pass they this test. They almost succeeded. <laughs> many, many people are disappointed that they didn't. Uh, <laughs> Troy, I just want to pass this test. Just tell me what I got to know. It's a multiple choice. Just, you know, go why? through the notes, try to memorize everything. Lie. Why? Why? That's what I was doing. I was asking why. And right here it says, I'm only passionately curious. As if that's like a small little thing. That's a huge thing. Be passionately curious. Wow. Um, let me ask you this. What is the opposite of not caring? Caring. And how do you show people you care? Um, giving them presents at Christmas. You can give them gifts. I think there's like five love languages. Are you talking about love languages now? I don't know what that You're is. too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that um, show people that you really care is by being passionately curious about them. And so I appreciate every time uh, people stop and clarify things, people take the time to explain things, people take the time to ask questions, and most importantly, take the time to listen. 
So here on the Troy Stober Show, our first, um, what was it called, Catchy Saying? Catchy Saying. Is Catchy Saying sponsored by anybody? No. Okay, so sponsorship opportunities abound here on our, our vidcast. Again, you can listen and you'll get a lot out of it, but you should probably watch if you want to get the full effect. Uh, and I would like to thank Albert Einstein uh, for today's catchy quote of the day. And light. Wait, that's what he did, right? No, no, that was uh, uh, Edison. Thomas Edison. Oh. Uh, Einstein wait, what, came what? up with the theory of relativity. E, I, e wait. equals mc squared. Okay, I, was, I got the first letter, right? <laughs> yeah, you did. No, you, you. They must be teaching you something in school. Nope, they're not. If I could make your day a little brighter with just a little din bar, a little, mm, a little, you like to put it right in front of your heart, like like I'm a superhero. I'm like you're starting a cult. Yeah. It's better than a cult. Everybody's happy. Well, actually, they're happy in a cult, too. Who knows? Well, they're also kind of crazy. that part out. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, uh, if you remember today's catchy saying and you remember today's vocabulary word and you appreciate some of the art that we went into with Art Vault and... Uh, Gosh, what was the other segment we did? Anyway, um, you might have gotten something out of the Troy Stober show. So uh, just to wrap things up, I want to thank Jack Stober for being here for the pilot uh, footage shooting of the Troy Stober show. Uh, it means a lot to me to have you here, to hear about your uh, joy and participation in uh, Youth Rodeo. Uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to make everybody's day a little bit brighter. The Troy Stober show has been brought to you by Pale It Forward from the craft brewers uh, coin toss brewer here in Oregon City. Pale It Forward has a great message, a great story, very consistent with the Troy Stober Show. Uh, during the pandemic, they came up with um, a very special formula for an IPA. It's drinkable, it's smooth, very tasty. I got a keg of it for the Super Bowl. Good thing it's drinkable. I mean, you'd think beer, I, it's, right? it, it is my favorite beer, and they sponsor the Troy Stober Show. So as a result... You should go get some. You should go get some. Oh, God. There I mean, will be a, a lot link of it. in the description if you've seen this on YouTube. <laughs>